and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Raylene. Hello, everyone. That's right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> we are very excited to be here today. Um, my hair is wet. And listen, <laughs> that's not going to affect this podcast in any way, but the I don't think I've ever recorded a video on the internet with my hair sopping wet. <laughs> I came from swimming because swimming is back. It's happening. Baby. It's back. I'm so excited that it's back. I've now been swimming five times, I oh think, my gosh. already. I know. I'm How jealous. are we already like deep into summer? I don't understand yeah, it's at happening. all. But it's been really great. And um, it's just kind of the, the time when we swim. They only have like adult lane swims mm-hmm. for a certain hour right in the middle of the day. And so trying to figure out when to record the <laughs> podcast, I was like, I can do both. We'll just do it with wet hair. So I'm like, is that going to be for all of summer that I'm going to have wet hair in the episodes? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I mean, if you're dedicated to swimming every single Monday, like you could right. just not. But you, if you want to, then yeah, I guess I your hair is going to be wet. <laughs> It's going to be wet. So like I say, that really does not affect the podcast or affects the video. It doesn't affect the audio, Mm. though. People on the audio version are like, move on. huh?" I also have a slightly (laughs) different angle today. So I'll also address that elephant in the room because there's now a cat tower in my in my uh, Uh, office room. And I didn't want that to show on the camera. So I had to move the way the camera is um, because we moved our living room around a little bit since we painted Mm. We got a TV stand last week right after we recorded. So that was a fun update. So now our living room is like really coming together. And I was like, this cat tower does not belong in this beautiful Mm. room. So it has moved. And now the cats have a new place to sleep. But it's making my desk situation a little bit more crazy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which is fine. It's It's all good. It's all the ups and downs of life, huh? Yep. I just realized I was supposed to text Connor to tell him, Connor, I made a smoothie, but I didn't have time to take it to you. (laughs) Connor, there is a smoothie waiting for you somewhere. I don't know where it is. My mom took it. She was like, I'll give it to Connor. I was like, I don't know if he's in a meeting. She's like, oh, I'll just put it near the door. (laughs) There's like smoothie on the floor by wherever he is. Yeah, just a little puddle. (laughs) Um, Okay. Well, I'm glad Connor just texted OMG. (laughs) What is happening? We have a developing situation. I'll keep an eye on that. Um, So, okay, let's first chat. How was your weekend? Any interesting life updates? I mean, the cat tree thing is a pretty interesting. It's huge. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's I haven't really done much. Um, The only kind of slight update is similar to you doing your swimming all the time. I've started exercising again. (gasps) I kind of fell off that train a while ago because especially with moving, we moved to a different city, as um, I'm sure I've said before. And the gym that I went to Mm. was not existing in the city that I moved to. Of course. Um, Luckily, and we moved in in November. So it's been however many months between then and now. But at the end of June, they opened a branch of my gym in the city I live in. So it just opened like a week ago. So I just started going there again because it was so inconvenient for me to go to the other one. Um, just mm. out of the way. I never went, so I just sort of stopped going. But the new one is kind of weird. It's in a mall. Oh. Um, so mm-hmm. it's. Oh, yeah. I feel very odd. I'm, like, walking into the mall in my gym clothes, <laughs> and then I, like, walk past an old Navy to, like, go to the gym. And so when I'm leaving, I can, like, <laughs> see a Coles when I'm leaving oh, the gym. And I'm like, that no. is going to be a big problem. Like, it hasn't for been a everyone, problem yet. For everyone not in the know, that oh, is true. a bookshop. Oh, That's a bookstore. A mall, Canadian bookstore it's chain little chapters. only in yeah. malls. Baby chapters. It's a little yeah. baby chapters that exists in the mall. And I, I never go to the mall. Like, that's just not somewhere I go. So I, I yeah. don't often go shopping at Kohl's. But now that I'm going to be mm. seeing it, every single time I go to the gym, which is hopefully going to be a few times a week, I'm just going to be Sweet. tempted by it. So Sweet temptation. Yeah. So I haven't gone over that way yet. I can see it, but I'm like, nope, I don't need a book. I really don't need a book today, but I can see that eventually it will. There will be a time where I will need a book. <laughs> That's a really funny. So I'm scared well, about that. I actually have had the opposite experience. Mm. I decided I needed a lot of books because oh. I bought a bunch of books. <laughs> okay. Um, so maybe let's start there. Please, I'm, in, I'm intrigued now. Um, first of all, I will report. Connor says that the, he has the smoothie. And it was at the top of the stairs. Oh. I'm assuming not on the floor. I'm That's what I'm going to picture, though. It's just <laughs> waiting for him on the top stair. 
<laughs> we have a little bookshelf at the top of the stairs. So I'm guess that's kind of a mm. ledge where things that it's kind of like a transient ledge. Things are moving a lot on that ledge. Like, yeah. you know, like when you have a mug in your room and you're like, I really got to take this down. Mm. And then you just put it on the ledge. Uh, so I'm assuming it was there. But anyways, now that that mystery is wrapped up, we got that plot line all sealed Thank up God. like a good book. Uh, we'll talk about the books I bought. So I had a really, really busy, fun weekend. It was kind of a wild and out of control weekend, okay. just like movement wise. Like we just did so much stuff. Yeah. Literally on Sunday night, Con I said to Connor, I was like, I wish we had another Sunday because... <laughs> Like, you, you know how, like, Saturday, like, Friday and Saturday are supposed to be the fun, busy days, yeah. and then Sunday's the rest yeah. relaxation day where you, like, do a couple of little errands to get ready for the week? Mm -hmm. We did not get that because it was just so fully packed. Shoot. Um, so, Saturday was a lot of fun. We started by visiting uh, La Have and Lunenburg, which, Ooh. as I've talked about before, is one of my favorite spots in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. And I love Lunenburg Bound, and it's close to Halifax, where we were going anyways. Yeah. Well, it's like an hour away from Halifax. So I was, I had ordered some books to Lunenburg Bound, and they've been waiting there for me for literally like months now. Oh my god! <laughs> but I ordered them because I was like, it's a reason to go to Lunenburg. Like True. it'll make us have to drive out there. So we had burritos in Lunenburg. That was great. Mm. I, well, actually, I had tacos, but it's a burrito restaurant, Delicious. so I had tacos. Connor didn't even have a burrito actually he had a burrito bowl so what on earth i just completely <laughs> lied um but yeah that was fun but we started like i said we went to the la have bookshop because you can take a ferry from oh. la have to lunenburg this is something that i really i'm learning to love about nova scotia everyone here is so specific about regions in a way that i <laughs> find honestly crazy like yeah. now that i'm getting used to it i'm like okay but for example people i'll be like where do you live and they're like timberly and i'm like that's halifax yeah oh. like you live in halifax you <laughs> yeah. just live in one of the suburbs of right. halifax right. you know what i mean or i'll be they'll be like i live in la have and i'm like that's ludenburg like it's it's ludenburg. the same it's thing the, <laughs> it's the region so i guess i'm thinking about it very like ta like you I'm used to people saying like, I live near this town, mm -hmm. like, because this is my nearest town. That's what I'd say. Right. But people here are like region, so region specific. Oh, that's so weird. And they'll be like, I'll be like, where is that? They're like, you know, that exit off of that highway. It's that region. I'm like, exactly. It's an exit oh, off it's, of a highway. It's just a region. It's, it's not a place. <laughs> it's a zone. It's not even a town. Um, but at first I found it really crazy. Now I love it. Everyone is like so proud of their little zone. Yeah. And well, and it's so a, much I like, guess in a way it is like a nice way to identify areas. Yeah, for me yeah. now, like for places near where I live, I would literally just be like, oh, yeah, it's off of that exit or whatever. It's near this place, yes, close totally. to this road. Like there's not like a specific way to describe it other than just that. Yeah. But that's kind of cute. Like off of the highway. No, it's really cute. And I'm learning to really love it. And it's also, I think it's just because like Nova Scotia is so old. Yeah. And it was like one of the first places that was settled. So like there's all of these little towns and villages that I think were just like how it was established. Mm. And that history has like really stayed on of how the little towns and villages, everyone's yeah. like really proud of their little town. So I, I actually have learned to love it, even though I even, I do objectively still think it's a little oh. hilarious because i'm like <laughs> everyone is so proud of their little region that i like am everyone lives in a different region apparently because yeah. they're like <laughs> like to the point i was talking to someone yesterday and uh they were like i was telling them that i'm gonna be staying in a cabin and they're like mm. where is it and i named the little region and they're like they're like where's that cabin and i explained the cabin and they're like oh that's not in the region that's not oh. that's not actually that region that's actually five minutes down the road oh, they like and I was care like, so much <laughs> i'm like <laughs> Okay, well, it's not not in the region, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> come on, guys. Anyhow, anyhow, anyhow. We went to La Have. I love La Have. I think it's so, so, so beautiful. And I've been there before, and I really did not need to go. But I wanted to go because it is one of the bookshops. Mm. And I'd been last year, but I was like, I need to go this year as part of my bookshop mission. Yeah. So I went to La Have, and I didn't end up buying any books. Hmm. Um this time around but i'm adding photos i took photos for my, the blog post oh, nice. for our website for my goal of visiting a bunch of bookshops right 
Then we went to Lunenburg, had lunch, and I picked up the books that I got. So the first one is Girl Juice by oh. Benji Nate. Oh, Benji. So, yeah. Yeah. So Benji Nate uh, wrote Hellphone which I read last year and I absolutely love. Did you read that last year? No, I haven't read okay. it. I haven't acquired any Benji Nate books, but I really want Catboy. Catboy yeah. is one of their books that I'm like, I need that. <laughs> it looks so <laughs> But cute. I haven't been able to track it down yet. So I read Hellphone last year and I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think that Girl Juice is a standalone. Mm. I'm pretty sure. That. I'm hopeful that, that it is because I really don't like st- series yeah um but either way i really enjoyed that other one this just came out this year so okay i will hopefully be reading that this summer and then i okay so i had bought i had put that in my cart for pickup right yeah and then i saw this other one that was like on their like new releases section of the website Mm -hmm. or whatever and i was like shoot (laughs) damn it that Uh-oh. sounds so good. <laughs> she needs it. And so I added it to my cart. And then when I saw it in the store, I realized how big it is. Oh. It's really big. And I'm now really I'm scared. Now. What is it? But it's called Honey Bees and Distant Thunder by Riku Onda. And it's translated by Philip Gabriel. Oh, who my is one gosh. Of the He's classics. our Murakami guy. Yeah. Look at that cover. It's incredible. I really... Yeah, I really, really like it. I also really enjoyed, like, look how well these two books match. Yeah, they're good the spines friends. Are both, oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, the spines are both the same color, and they've got the blue, so that was cool. Um, I really know very little about this book because, like I said, it was a, a very impulse <laughs> add-to-cart moment. Yeah. But it sounds so good. <laughs> like, okay, so I go to pick up the books, and I was like, I ordered two books, um, Girl Juice and another one i literally couldn't even remember what it was called i, I didn't really been there like uh, <laughs> I, I like, want this book but i don't know what it is I don't or why anything but then i reread it and i was like okay yes i really remember why i bought this so okay. listen to this synopsis in a small coastal town already i'm like mm-hmm. okay yep loving the coastal vibes just a stone's throw from tokyo a prestigious piano competition is mm-hmm. underway Over the course of two weeks, three students will experience some of the most joyous and painful moments of their lives. Though they don't know it yet, each will profoundly and unpredictably change the others forever. It goes on from there talking about all the different characters, but then it said, um, oh, I'm trying to, it said like, with a race to the end, race (gasps) to the end of the competition, Mm. like everything boils. So first of all, you and I have talked a lot about how we love books about people that have to be really good at their yeah, thing. I love that so much. Like stuff like Queen's Gambit or Ballad for Sophie, mm-hmm. where it's like a competition or, um, yeah, just like someone who's really ambitious. Mm-hmm. So I loved that element. Secondly, we both obviously love Japanese translated yep. stuff. So that excited me. The coastal town element mm-hmm. excited mm-hmm. me. And I really loved the timeline element. The idea of like this whole book takes place over two weeks of this big yeah, competition. That's pretty cool. So there's so many elements that sound awesome. I really am very excited about it. It says winner of the Naoki Prize um, and the Japan Japan Booksellers Award. Nice. It says over a million copies sold in Japan. So clearly it's like did a lot of big stuff over there. Mm-hmm. And it's also one of those things that like, you know, a book is getting prestigious when it gets a prestigious translator. Yeah. And the fact true. that the guy who translated like Haruki Murakami has translated that, I'm yeah. like, oh, that gives it another interesting stamp. That's true. Stamp. That's true. So that seems cool, right, Ray? Yeah. I also love how big it is. I know it scares you, I but know. it makes me excited. It intimidates me <laughs> for sure. And then I did another, I was like, oh, God, Uh-oh. Ariel, stop. Just throw one stop more in the yourself. basket. Why not? This is one i think we've talked about this and i'm i don't remember if you have this one yet or not okay days at the morisaki bookshop by satoshi yagisawa mm, no i don't have that one yet but a lot of people have sent that to yeah me seriously <laughs> there's a cat there's a cat i know on it, so I it's feel a bookshop like every, it's japanese it's a cat it's a japanese bookshop <laughs> cat book i can't like it, it I hits imagine, all the boxes i really need i that. imagine everyone has sent it to you um 
this one also sounds so beautiful, so... Qu- this one sounds really quaint. Mm. So it's a 25-year-old character who has, like, a pretty good job, uh, like, a pretty good life, and then classic, everything falls apart. Oh, yeah. Her boyfriend really unexpectedly breaks up with her, and she had, like, expected that they were going to get married. Oh, no. So it's, like, very unexpected, and then... Um, she yeah she loses her jobs her friends and her acquaintances all at once and she ends up getting a call from her distant uncle who um runs a bookshop and so she ends up going to work there Hmm. it's really short ray it's 145 (laughs) pages that's awesome um who is this one translated by let me let me share that piece of info because it's not on the cut. Where is that info? Hmm. <laughs> Translated by Eric Ozawa. Um, Ozawa. Yeah. Cool. It sounds this really kind of gives me um, like uh, oh, Christ. What was it called? The Becky Chambers book. Oh, robot. A song for the wild build. <laughs> It gives me like those sorts of vibes yeah, where it's like, yeah. I feel like it won't be that stressful and it will sort of just be like a beautiful, happy, calm thing. That's the vibes I'm getting. Okay. That's nice. So after that, we did our little, <laughs> She's like, done. <laughs> no, no, we went to La Have, we went to Lunenburg, but remember the point of this whole day was to go to Halifax because right. Connor was entering a smash tournament. Connor plays competitive uh, Super Mario Brothers Smash Melee for the Nintendo GameCube. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> I don't know if I've mentioned that before. So he was going to a tournament, um, but it wasn't starting till the evening. We thought it was starting earlier. And so we had to, we drove into mm-hmm. Halifax. We had food, but we were like, God, we got some time to kill. What should we do? And I was like, well, we could go to more bookshops. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> because as you know, Raylene, in my mission to visit all the bookshops, yeah. there's a lot in Halifax yeah. and Dartmouth that I have to visit. And we were like, let's do it. So we started off, oh, am I missing a book? Oh, I see it, I see it. Okay, we started off by going to the King's Co-op Bookstore. Mm. This is an on-campus bookstore at the universe, uh, Dalhousie University. Okay. And I, this is a controversial thing, right? Because I'm like, do I count university bookshops? Yeah. They're sort of different. So I kind of felt like I have to go to them to decide if they count or okay. not. And I would say that the King's Co-op Bookshop definitely counts. Yeah. It's very strange. It's like right on the cusp of not counting as a bookshop. <laughs> okay. So first of all, like, and I'll insert um photos here, like in B-roll, and then also we'll have photos on the Instagram and most importantly on the website Mm -hmm. so if you want to see photos they're available but when you go to the building that's like on google maps says it's there there's one little tiny piece of paper tucked into a window (laughs) in an otherwise giant university building yeah that just says reading downstairs it doesn't even say the name of the bookshop it was (laughs) very confusing it's weird So Connor was like, I guess we go downstairs. I'm like, yep. So we opened these giant university doors and it's like an old timey building and there's an elevator there. And we're like, okay, I guess we go down and we'll just try and find it. (laughs) So we click down and we're like waiting in the elevator and then the doors open and you're in the bookshop. Oh. It's not even like a hallway to a door or a door. It's just Elevator like the hall- to there. <laughs> You're there. So that was like, we were like, oh, okay. And it sort of felt like this bookshop was just built into a random hallway corner. Oh. <laughs> like slowly they had started adding bookshelves to this corner, yeah. but it was kind of a hallway. It was, it's really strange. Like yeah. you'll see it in the photos. I'll send you photos, right? Like it was a little strange, yeah. but the reason I want to count it because it had so many good books Mm. like there was one wall that was all of the university texts for people that are like okay i've signed up for this class i need to buy these books but only one wall of those everything else was like you know there was a whole table of new releases page boy by elliot page was there um so it had like lots of new releases it had lots of classics but like really great covers and editions okay so it felt like a good bookshop if i was on campus i would go there and buy cool books and new books and so it i I, it counts as a bookshop and they had a really cool stall of penguin classic deluxe editions Mm. that i've never seen before like you know like the spinny types of things yeah (laughs) i don't know what else to call it a spinny shelf rack yeah Yeah. it had one of those but only stock chalk 
full no of way. these deluxe editions. And I had so much fun looking at all oh. of them. There's so many. Yeah. And I decided to get one of them. I got the Sherlock Holmes Ooh. bind up. This has all four of the novels that he wrote. Uh, Study in Scarlet, Hound of the Baskervilles, The Valley of Fear, and The Sign of Four. So all in one handy bind up. And yep. it's a very fun, like look oh, at I the back. It. Like there's like murders going on Fantastic. in a building and stuff. It's really beautiful. Um, I was like, that's perfect. And it feels also like a good thing to have bought at a university bookshop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> so got that one there. We then went to the Dalhousie bookshop. Oh my God. Which was like like five minute drive down. It was a different bookshop. Yeah. Horrendous. <gasps> Absolutely does not count as a bookshop. First of all, you see this giant photo, like or not photo, like entrance on glass mm -hmm. that says Dalhousie Bookstore. Okay. And you're They're like, okay, great. I'm walking into a bookstore. You step in, all you see is merch. It's just Dalhousie University merch, oh. like sweaters, water bottles, like backpacks, yeah, everything yeah. that you could imagine that a university student <laughs> might get, but no books. You turn the corner and there's a giant sign that says book room. And okay. you're like, okay, so the whole shop is just like stationery and supplies yeah. and stuff that a student might want, but not like books. Right, right. Not what we and came then here the for. <laughs> book room was closed, but oh. I looked in and all there was was like science textbooks. So there was no garbage. like- This is no good. There, yeah, it was garbage. It was not a bookstore in any capacity. <laughs> they should not call it that. They should call it Dalhousie Merch Store. <laughs> yeah. um, so that one does not count. It is stricken from the record. Okay. It does not count as a bookshop. And then we decided to go to one more. I swear to God, we had too much fun. <laughs> so we went to Trident Books and Cafe. Ooh. This was exciting because I'd been past this shop many times on my drive to go to my book binding classes, mm -hmm. but I'd never gone in. It was very cool. Raylene, okay. it was definitely like half bookshop, half cafe, yeah. which is a beautiful vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So there was a lot of people chatting and talking and drinking coffee, but then there was also a lot of people book shopping. Mm. It was Good a stuff. used bookstore. I didn't see any new books. There may have been some like um, remainder books, mm, but not yeah. like a new release section or right. anything. We spent a nice amount of time in there because there was there was a lot of cool stuff, and I ended up getting two books, and they were both really cheap because it was like I said, a used bookshop. Right. Okay. So the first one was The Art of Fielding oh. by Chad Harback. Is that one this about a, baseball? Yes. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, totally. Cool. This is a book that I have seen around for years and years. Yeah, yeah, me too. This is definitely one of those books that you can find used. Oh, You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's so many copies flying around. This book really blew up when it came out. Um, it was like, uh, it was, I don't think they made a movie of it, but I'm like kind mm. of shocked. Yeah. Because yeah. it was so big at the time. I'm trying to remember when it came out. I want to say like 2010. I would oh, yeah, two... 2011. Oh, there you go. I don't know what I was going to 2011. Um, interestingly, it's the only book this author's ever published. Oh. Which is kind of that fascinating. Interesting. And it's a book about baseball. It's like a beloved book about baseball. And even now when I looked up the, like, Goodreads yeah. rating, it had, like, such high ratings. Like, people okay. love this book. Like, I've and heard I nothing like, about I... it. Like, I have no idea what it's actually <laughs> about or why people love it. Yeah, it says, um, at Westish College, baseball star Henry Scrimshander, oh. amazing name, seems destined for big league stardom. But when a routine throw goes disastrously mm. off course, the fates of five people are upended. Oh, my Ooh, that's gosh. That's interesting. Um, as the season counts down to its climactic final game. <gasps> God, I love that. I love that. <laughs> These five are forced to confront their deepest hopes, anxieties, and secrets. Uh awesome i love a sports book yeah it's kind it's of intriguing. a classic in the genre so it was so cheap it was so cheap the other okay this final book that i'm going to talk about i'm like why ariel you made a choice did you need to make this choice <laughs> really i did not oh, but i made it and um it looks like fun there's like one hair i'm trying to f really let go of the fact that my hair looks so dorky that's okay. <laughs> <clears throat> this is letters from the summer of 1926 Huh? And it's 
three it's three people Boris Pasternak, Marina ooh, Tsvetavieva, and Rainer Maria Rilke. Um the summer of 1926, it was a crazy time in uh, Russia and in Europe, and I don't know which ones of these people are Russian and which ones are not. Many of them were fleeing Russia, etc. Mm. But this is a collection, it's a bind up of their three letters that they oh, wrote to cool. each other. Oh, that's really cool. Yes, Raylene, I randomly flipped to a random page. It was amazing. I read a letter and I was like, this is so interesting. Like it was one of the people and they were like, I'm writing to you because I feel like you have been trying to block my friendship with the other friend. (laughs) And I was like, oh my God, this is such juicy drama. Yeah. (laughs) And it's so interesting. Like letter writing is, is a dead art form, right? Like, and I think when, when we think about letter writing of the past, it really was not just a way of communicating like people put a lot of effort into their letters um and i think people expected people to hold on to them forever so um especially rilke is like a really famous poet and so i like the idea that he is actually rainer maria rilke imagine if it's a she and i'm like completely wrong either way yeah i'm also trying to remember who boris pasternak is i heard that name before but what did he write yeah i'm not sure i I don't really know much about these, uh, anything about these three people. And I thought, what a cool way to find out about them. (laughs) Oh, Dr. Zhivago. Oh. That's what I'm thinking of. That's a big book. Oh, that's so interesting. So Boris is Russian. He's one of the Russians for sure. Okay. (laughs) Edited by Evgeny Pasternak, Yelena Pasternak, and another person. So is that their children? That's interesting. And then Susan Sontag did a preface for this. So oh. it just sounded really cool. It was literally like 10 bucks. I was like, dang it. That's a cool That's it. a cool find. I think that sounds like it an aerial cool book find. that you wouldn't I, find anywhere else. So yeah, I had to jump you on had it. To. I thought it was really cool. So I had a really, really big bookshop weekend. How many bookshops did I go to? La Have, Lunenburg Bound, the real uh, yeah. campus one, the fake campus one, and then tried. So I went to five That's bookshops. Amazing. It was it was kind of inevitable that uh, I was going to get a lot of books. Yeah, it's true. It okay. was going to happen. I thought of a question for you while you were talking about the bookstores. Do you mm. know if there are any, because they're all independent bookstores that you're going to, obviously that's the whole kind yeah. of challenge, but are there any that have multiple branches like across Nova mm. Scotia? Have you discovered that That's a really good yet? question. Not yet. Okay. So far, none. Because I'm thinking um, if I did that in BC, I already know of one that has two locations. So I wonder mm, if there's any like that in Nova Scotia. There is one, Bookmark, your favorite. Oh, yeah, Bookmark. Yeah. They have a location in Prince Edward Island. Oh. Or, yeah, in in Charlottetown. So they, and Charlottetown was the first one and then they did oh. the Halifax one. So, so I mean, but that's not, I won't visit that one as part of this project because it's not in, in Nova yeah. Scotia. Yeah. But it is in PEI so, somewhere that you want to go, so exactly. it could still happen. I do need to go. I do need <laughs> desperately to go. Um, yeah, so this brings me up, hold on, I had written it down, to 10 out of the 36 bookshops visited. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. It is pretty good. Year. You still got to hit I told a, quite you, a few to catch yes, up. But. When I... Remember I told you most of the bookshops would be hit during the summer. Yeah, and now it's true. summer, I really have been ramping up the amount that I've been visiting. Yeah. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. However, I will say, this is pretty frustrating stuff. <laughs> I was looking up, I forget where, I think in Dartmouth or something. I was looking up uh, one of the bookshops I needed to visit. Mm-hmm. And a different bookshop came up. Uh-oh. That was not on my list. <gasps> And oh. then I looked up another one that is on my list. Yeah, it's gone. It doesn't exist. Uh-oh. So I <laughs> fear that the list is not accurate. And yeah. I will yeah. be this week. Actually, I've been like, I've written it down as a task, perfecting the list. Okay. Because basically I got the list from an official website. It was like, the Writers of Nova Scotia yeah. Association. They had a list on their website. And I, so I thought I could trust the Writers of Nova Scotia. <laughs> Apparently but, not. Yeah. Uh, I do not always think... changing too. You never know. Like it's bookstores true. could could have closed between six months ago and now, or it's opened true. between six months ago and yeah. now. If it's a brand new totally. bookstore, are you going to go to it? Like, does that count, or is that off? I think it counts. The record. <laughs> I think. 
<laughs> I think it counts. Okay. Um, but I, I just feel like there's some inaccuracies on the list. Yeah. There was also like one of the bookshops on the list. I looked it up. It's not really a bookshop. It's more of like a gift shop that has oh. one shelf with books. Yeah, in. you got to be careful about stuff like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. we're gonna, I think I'm going to have to perfect the list. But I mean, in a way, that's sort of the point of this project, right? Is like yeah. really Find learning about the scene yeah. and finding the shops and everything. So the number might have to change. It might not be 36 bookshops. Mm-hmm. Okay. It might go up or down a little bit, but we'll figure. I'll figure that out hopefully in the coming week. All right. It was a big shakeup when I realized that. No kidding. All right. That was my very big book haul that I didn't think was going to happen this weekend. Like, I didn't know it was going to be a big uh, book shopping weekend, but I'm very excited about all of them. I would say that these three, (laughs) these three were like chipmunk books or acorn books. Yeah. Where I'm just like, I'm glad I have them, but they're probably going to be sitting on my shelf for a while. Mm -hmm. These three are all... Yeah, they all match, first of all, and they all are like, I want to read them soon. Soon. Um, That's a good balance. At least you have three of each. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I've talked for ages, so it's your turn, Raylene. What has your reading been like this week? Oh, well, my reading hasn't been all that interesting, but I'll do my best. So I am still reading Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. I'm now approximately like 75 to 80% of the way into it. Gotcha. So last week I had predicted that I was going to be reading this for weeks to come, but I'm hoping to kind of power through this the next couple of days. So here's okay. the situation with this book. Hmm. It is really good, oh. but it is so slow. Like it's yeah. one of the slowest paced books I've read in a long time where I've actually okay. like, I'm enjoying the book, but it's just, I don't know how it's so slow, <laughs> but I'm still really liking it. It just is taking me like a lot of time to read. I know it probably doesn't seem like it because I, was, you know, just 50 pages in last week and now I'm really far into it, but I've spent a lot of time, like, with this book in the past week. Um, I'll, like, sit down for, like, three or four hours and just, like, read a whole bunch and it's like, wow, I got through, like, 70 pages. Okay. Okay, Like, it's one of those books, but it's not bad. So it's like, I'm having Mm. such a difficult time with it because I... I'm also having this thing where I have like two or three books on my shelves that I keep looking at that I'm like, I want to start that one. I want to start that one right now. But I want to finish this first because I know that I may not come back to it if I put it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I'm enjoying it, like it's it's so difficult because I don't want to stop reading it. I don't want to DNF it, but I also am like more excited about other books right now, which is a little bit annoying. Um, But I am really still enjoying it. And like I said, I'm hoping to maybe just sit down and like finish it today. Like that's kind of one of my goals for today is maybe just spend the rest of the day reading so Mm. that I can finish it and move on to one of my other exciting books. Yeah. I, just, I mean, it is a really good, like, summer read, though. If anybody's looking for, like, a good coming-of-age kind of horror sci-fi, sometimes, like, magical realism a little bit. Like, sometimes I don't oh. know if what's happening is really happening or, like, what's going on. Um, right. But it's, yeah, it's good. There's lots of, like, fun elements to this book. Like, there's, it's, like, this really small town that's kind of just, like, a sleepy small town, like I talked about last week. And there's, like, a murder at the very beginning and that kind of, mm. you know begins the mystery but then there's all these other like side weird things happening like there's this kind of like monster that lives in the river that nobody believes exists but the main character sees it and oh. he's like oh my god it's real and nobody believes him but he's like i totally saw it like it's it's legit it's real <laughs> and like all these like weird things like that keep happening yeah. so it has like exciting elements but it's somehow so slow like i don't know mm. it's so weird but yeah it is it is really good though um it gets like overwhelmingly positive reviews as, you know, it's very nostalgic. It's set in the sixties. So it's like, you know, days gone by, like simpler times, um, small town, like everybody knows each other. It has that like, you know, kids riding around on bikes, like bikes are a big thing. They love like playing (laughs) pass with a baseball. Like it's got all these like good, like old timey kind of fun vibes going on. Hell yeah. Um, And there's like, uh, not like a circus, but like a kind of fair that happens in town and like there's all these weird things going on there and it's just like mm. it makes you like feel like you're a kid again a little bit reading this book. I just yeah. wish it was a, like moving along a little more quickly. But that being said, it also still mm. has like a lot of exciting things happening. They're just really spread out from each other. So so maybe the ending will kind of speed up a bit as things like come to a maybe. climax. Because also it's kind of 
I'm just noticing now the way that the book is laid out, it's like an entire year. So like you start out as the beginning of okay. the year and then it's, you know, moves into spring, moves into summer, moves into fall. And now I'm just moving into winter. So I'm like, what's going to happen in winter? I feel like uh. that's the least interesting season for this type of book. Like <laughs> summer and fall are what yeah. we want, you know, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. summer vibes and the Halloween vibes. And then after that, ooh, I don't know. So yeah, I just don't know. I have no idea where it's going. It hasn't really been like leading towards something specific where you're huh, like oh i okay. know where this is going which is nice i feel like yeah. i'm just kind of i have no idea where world. it's going which is a good feeling i guess so yeah we'll see i'm just like i don't That's know so i don't know how to talk about yeah. it it's like it's not, i'm not like excited about it but i do like okay. it and i do recommend it but i'm not like hyped on it like i have been with other books that i've been loving <laughs> that that really reminds me actually of how my reading experience with the miseducation of cameron post yeah yeah by emily danforth mm -hmm. is that right yes yeah. that was a book genuinely guys i read what a decade ago yeah, a long time ago it was a long time ago but when i read it i was like i really like it i like the characters i like the like the world the setting the yeah. thing, like the the plot even but i also just why is it so slow like, yeah it felt like a hundred pages needed to be chopped from that book mm -hmm. but i couldn't tell you where yeah it's such an odd experience i feel experience. like that too because it's like every every time i start to think like oh this is really starting to get maybe on the cusp of being boring then all of a sudden it'll be like boom like a crazy event will happen yeah. that mm -hmm. will really like bring you back into it but it's like it keeps doing that it, like keeps bringing me right to the edge <laughs> of boredom and then brings me back <laughs> <laughs> like what are you doing to me it just kind of makes me surprised that it gets such overwhelmingly positive reviews because i'm like doesn't anybody okay. else get bored like some of the reviews right. i read people are like it's amazing that the author can take you on this like 580 page journey and you never get bored and i'm like well i'm kind of on the cusp of boredom all the time <laughs> but maybe that's just me i don't know <laughs> maybe i just can't relate to it because i that's wasn't a 12 year old yeah. boy in the 60s like i don't know maybe it's just yeah. a specific vibe that certain people can relate to more than i can maybe I don't know. yeah are know. you reading anything else? No, that's all I'm okay. reading. Because I really wanted to just dedicate myself to reading one like yeah. big book. Because this I is like, like a fairly long book. So I was like, I don't want to like have myself getting distracted. And I fear that if I had, I would I would have abandoned this book already. Like it would mm. be like by the wayside and I'd be off reading some shorter book. And so I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm glad yeah. that I decided to do it this way. It's just kind of like a downer for my reading. Yeah. Like it's, it's slowing me down. And it's like summer is the time when I want to be reading a lot. And like... Totally. blasting through the books so hopefully that'll happen once i'm finished this but <sighs> i just have to finish <laughs> <laughs> um all right well i did finish some oh my god please good for you i you're gonna be uh, i don't know what you're Confused, gonna be actually. excited i Confused. read it a uh, rental person who does nothing. Yay! Okay, I love that. By Shoji Morimoto. Shoji Morimoto lives in Tokyo and launched a project called Rental Person Who Does Nothing in 2018. He worked traditional writing jobs until he had an unpleasant work experience and decided to quit and try this experiment. People can write in with any request as long as they pay for his travel and he doesn't have to do anything. The book, published in 2023, chronicles his thoughts and experiences with the project. So as you recall, I hauled this last week. Yeah. It was sent to me by um, Pan Macmillan. So thank you to them. This was a gifted copy, a review copy. Um, let me show for the video version and maybe oh. I'll take a photo of this. The bookmark that I chose Amazing. is the perfect, perfect color scheme. I'm very excited about that. And I mentioned last week that I had read the like first two or three pages yeah. and that I was like, wow, I kind of want to just keep reading that. Mm -hmm. And I just found throughout the week that I kept wanting to read this. So I was yep. like, I've just got to read it. So I, I read it and I I have mixed mixed feelings. Uh -huh. I have mixed feelings about it. So on the one hand, here are the things that I really liked. Okay. First of all, just in general, the concept is yeah. what is the most fascinating part of this book. Like I said in the info bit there, this is a guy who was having a lot of trouble working. Um, not like physically like he he would show up to his job and he would do what was requested mm -hmm. of him but he just felt so much stress and pressure all of the time yeah. and he was like really grappling with this idea that like humans 
should be able to live their lives without having to be stressed all of the time. Oh, yeah. Which is how he was feeling at work all the time. And so he had a particularly bad boss who was like really mean to him and mm -hmm. like kept basically like literally was saying that he was like a worthless waste of space. Oh. And he was like, I'm going to quit this job. Like <laughs> I, I quit. So yeah. he quit his job and had this idea for this weird little experiment mm. on Twitter where he would become a rental person that you could rent them out mm. <laughs> to do nothing. Like he was like, I don't want to do anything. Like I can't <laughs> explain to you how much I don't want to do anything, yeah. but I'm willing to show up and not do something like next to together. You yeah. <laughs> and funny. so it's obviously such a strange concept. Um, but there's so many different like, the question, of course, is like, so what were people renting him to do? Yeah. So, for example, a lady rented him to come with her to sign her divorce papers. Oh. Because she knew that if she had brought family or a friend that she knew, she would just feel really awkward the whole time yeah. and not know what to say. But she also didn't want to be alone. Yeah. Um, and so she's like, I just want you to come with me and I'll sign the papers and I'll si hand them in yeah. and then you can go. And and also part of it was like, I also want to feel like, you know, a new phase of my life is starting. And the idea that like, I'm doing something kind of weird with you, like you're coming <laughs> yeah. along, it will mark it as like a new era. Yeah. And so he did, he just shows up. He doesn't, he doesn't really say anything. He'll, he says he can only answer in simple responses. Okay. And that's just him being like setting expectations where he's like, I'm not like talking and having a conversation mm -hmm. would be doing something. Right. He's I like, just want to be there I existing. do do anything. <laughs> um, another example was people that like wanted to go to a concert, but they didn't want to go by themselves. Okay. Or another example was, this one was really cute. It was a guy who, um wanted to try i forget what kind of drink it was but yeah. i got the feeling that it was a little bit like a like a girly drink mm -hmm. oh here it is i want to taste a starbucks hojicha frappuccino Ooh. i like sweet things normally and i've heard that it isn't that sweet but i'd still like to try it i don't think i'd be oh this is a different i don't think i'd be able to drink it all so would you share it with me i wouldn't like to leave any Aww. That's one of the requests. That's so he cute. like has some and then gives the rest to him and then that's it. Um, the one I was thinking of was like, he wants to try kind of like a quote unquote girly-ish drink, yeah. but he's too embarrassed to go on his own as a mm, man and like do an it. Appetini. He's like, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, if we go together and you get one, like that'll be fine. It'll be yeah. chill. We'll just be like friends doing something. But I think it'd be weird if I do it by oh, myself. Okay. So he'll go and do that. So there's like the really emotional ones where it's like the divorce mm -hmm. ones or like someone go or another big one was people just like not being able to do stuff if there wasn't an accountability person. Oh, okay. So they'd be like, would you meet me at this street corner? Because if you're, if I know you're there, it'll make me go. Cause I wouldn't want to disappoint you and mm -hmm. not show up, but otherwise I won't go to my appointment oh, or whatever. Interesting. Um, or someone who, or there was one who, where somebody wanted to drop off their ex-boyfriend's stuff, but yeah. she didn't want to go alone, okay. but she didn't want to bring a friend and like cause drama and yeah. stuff like that. So all of these different episodes, those are the most interesting part of the book. Mm -hmm. Hearing about why people crave that companionship, want somebody there, even if they won't say anything or they don't do anything, just having another person there is a, there's a something very powerful there, yeah. right? The problems with the book were that, okay, there, so there's one big problem and I noticed it in reviews as well, really. Okay. Like people are not impressed with this. He didn't write the book, but he sort of wrote the book and oh. it's very unclear. It's very kind, it's a little sketchy mm. if I'm honest. So basically he says it's in the, it's in the prologues and it's in the foreword. Okay. So he's like being upfront about it, but he says, um, readers must find the whole thing bizarre, blah, blah, blah. This book is an attempt to answer that question. If it was written simply by me, I think it would be too subjective. I'm very confused about what's happened and on my own, I'd find it tough to come up with a convincing book. So we tried an experiment. A writer and an editor asked me questions and I gave them very simple responses. And through that process, we tried to find an answer. The writer is not a particular fan of rental person. He has written objectively and in a way that people who don't know anything about my activities can get a clear picture. So with that as my excuse, I have, as usual, done nothing. 
I have simply watched with interest and surprise as this book has developed. That is so weird. What does that mean? Because what? the book, really, the book is written in the first person. Like, it's like, oh, I like met that. them. Yeah. I saw them. But it's not in an interview style. Like, the beginning of the chapter is not right. like, what was your favorite experience? Or how did you make money? Or yeah. they're, they're, And so I couldn't tell who wrote what. Yeah, and that's really confusing. I, so I found that really weird. And I can tell that other readers are finding that weird as well. And I felt like I just wanted him to have written his own book. Yeah. And like done it in a way that had themes or messages. Or like if he's like, I'm not really a writer, but I like we wanted to make a book. Mm -hmm. Be very clear about who's writing what part. Yeah. Or like make so it obvious that it was kind of like an interview almost. And yes, like these yes. are just his answers written down. Yes. But then there's n the questions that he was asked are not in here. Yeah, that's weird. So I'm like, did they cut those out or edit those out? I don't really understand. And also, if he just gave simple answers, like how much of it is actually what he said and how much is just like them exactly. making something up potentially. I don't know. I it's have really no weird. idea. <laughs> it's really strange. So first of all, I couldn't get over that. Like I just found that really strange. And the whole time in the back of my head, I was like, who wrote this? <laughs> <laughs> Who really did this here? <laughs> the second thing is that I really felt that he didn't have particularly thoughtful uh, reflections on the moments. Right? And that's important when you're reading it a memoir. Is. <laughs> it is really. Like half of it is having something interesting to write about, which in this case is this crazy project. Yeah. The other half is having something really thoughtful to say about what happened yeah. to you. There's loads of people who have lived really fascinating lives or have gone through really interesting and that, that in the broadest sense of the word, mm -hmm. like could be traumatic or it could be brave or whatever, but like something have gone through something that's worth sharing. But half the other half is you have to be able to write a compelling mm -hmm. story. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like he was saying anything. Right. And I like, I was totally able to read it because, first of all, it's super short. It's 150 pages. Mm -hmm. So even if it was a little boring at times, it wasn't that there wasn't that much reading involved. Yeah. And secondly, the concept itself is so interesting. And like examples of it are peppered out so consistently. Okay. Like, and then I did this one and there was this one yeah. and there was this one. And literally they're the tweets. Like they're oh, just the tweets, okay. like how the person tweeted him and how he tweeted about the experience. So you're literally seeing how it was in real time. Mm -hmm. Those happen so consistently that you're like, okay, I'll just read until the next one. I'll just read until yeah. the next one. Cause those are the juicy parts. But I actually found that I myself was making the reflections <laughs> as opposed, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'd read one and I'd be like, wow, I wonder why that person wanted that. And then I'd think about it and that, but I wasn't getting that as much from his writing. Mm -hmm. Or was it his writing? Yeah, I almost <laughs> feel like it would have been better if it was the whole book was just like tweets. And then like if he had written blog posts after each experience or something like yes. that. And then those had just yeah. been like plunked into the book. I feel like that would have made more sense. A hundred percent. So I like don't really agree with the formatting of the book. Oh, okay. Um, so I don't even, do I recommend it or not? I don't, I'm not sure. It's a confusion. <laughs> it's a confusing one. I de Because it's so short, I would say if you're intrigued, check it out. Because it's so easy to read yeah. that you'll get through it and it won't have cost you that much time. But I am still left a little like, huh? Um, yeah. I wanted to also mention in my review of this book, Sim a lot of similarities to I Want to Die, but I Want to Eat I was thinking that Bucky. the whole time you were talking, yeah. So the, I literally wrote down three okay. examples of the similarities. The first one is immense work stress, mm. which is clearly a big theme in Korean and in J Japanese yeah. literature. Like so many of the books that we read that are translated from there are just about young women stressed out of their People minds. being burnt out, yeah. Yeah. So it's like clearly a theme, right? But the immense work stress in I Want to Die But I Want to Eat Bucky was such a big theme, like how anxious she was. Mm -hmm. Do you remember about all the interactions with work and with a job and all that sort of stuff? Yeah. That's the that's the big theme in this book as well, is like the concept of work. What is work? Yeah. Why do we work? What should we put up with? Who? What kinds of work can people do? The second one was this big theme of loneliness. Mm. Like 
you, you get the sense in Korean and, and Japanese books and like generally through culture and stuff, that they have a, a very emotionally repressed culture where they like yeah. f- clearly feel like they can't speak out, yeah. which is why books like I Want to Die, But I Want to Eat Tukbaki or Kim Ji Young, 1982, books like this that are like about mental health in these countries are so big, like are such yeah. a big deal yeah. Yeah. because people are clearly having this, this crisis. So... He talks pretty early on in the book about how he he exposes how his siblings have had such immense work stress that mm. his um his sister died by suicide because of it. Yeah. And so clearly that is affecting how he thinks about work yeah. and the amount of stress that he has in work. So I think it's a really interesting and important theme. And I just remembered that as well in that other yeah. memoir. Yeah, it's big. The third one. This might actually be the biggest one. Oh, just of similarity, it felt like to me in writing style yeah. was how hyper casual they are. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember reading that book? Just felt like, like she just said it out loud once and then never edited it. Yeah. Like it was like a blog post mm-hmm. where it was just like, yeah, I ju- I'll just say my thoughts. And like he said, like I give simple answers. Like I just say it out loud once and then maybe someone else will edit it. Maybe move not. on to the next it- one. <laughs> It really doesn't feel like someone who wanted to write a book and took years finessing it. Mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. it's it is very blog posty. Yeah, I know. What you mean. And that's not bad. It's just a style. It's yeah. just like this very hyper casual, very chill kind of um, like goes on tangents and stuff mm-hmm. kind of writing. And yeah, I just wanted to point out another similarity. So if somebody really liked. I want to die, but I want to eat Tuck yeah. Bucky. I think they'd actually love this. Very oh, similar books. Yeah. But just from kind of a different project. Yeah. Um, okay. And then the other thing I'm reading now that I finished that is I'm like kind of back to what I was meaning to read, but <laughs> I've made more progress in the year of magical thinking. Oh, nice. Um this is the most depressing book I've ever read. <laughs> And oh, I, no. I'm really glad that I'm listening to the audiobook simply because it means I'm only listening to it in the car. And I'm not driving <laughs> around very often. in the car. <laughs> yeah, but like I'm not driving around very often. Like most of my life is spent in my house. Mm-hmm. And so when I do drive, I'm like, okay, I'll listen to a half hour of this book. Yeah. And I listen to it. And then I'm like, it's going to be a couple days before I listen to more of so it. So it's not like an overload. It's not an overload. Yeah. That was fun to talk about that book. And go. thanks again to Panamac for selling, sending it. Um, I We are now going to do... We're excited. We're going to do... I don't think we have that much to talk about. No, it won't take too long. No. But we're going to do a quarterly update. We got feedback at the end of last year from people who, who were like... We love following your goals, but we wish that you would talk about them more throughout the year. Mm-hmm. And we we're like, you guys are totally Makes right. Let's <laughs> let's do it quarterly. Yeah. Let's start like every three months. Let's talk about how our goals are going. Mm-hmm. So, Raylene, again, yet again, I feel like I've talked for a while Send on that review. So, take it away. All right, <laughs> I'll just go through all of my stuff. So. Mm-hmm. I have a few goals this year. My four goals are to read a classic every quarter, to read six fantasy books, Mm. to read at least 50% of all the books I haul throughout the year, and then to read my seven most owned authors. So those are the goals that I'm working with here. So as of right now, the second quarter is over. So we're halfway through the year. So if there's any like quarterly things, I need to be on top of them. So luckily I am. Um, So for my read a classic every quarter, I have read two classics so far. I read uh, A Jest of God by Margaret Lawrence and then True Grit by Charles Portis. Yep. The thing that I feel like is a failure to me about this part of my goal is neither of those were books that were on my shelf that I wanted to read at the beginning of the year. year. Exactly. So I feel like I feel like I'm cheating on that one a little bit. Because it's not, like, deep down, this isn't what I wanted. Like, yes, I have read two books that are technically classics, but they weren't what I wanted to read. I want to read, like, Wuthering Heights or something. You know, something that is more of, like, a mashed potato chipmunk. I really agree with you you on this. I'm feeling the same way. Yeah, so I'm intrigued intrigued to see how you're doing. Because I know you also have a classics goal this year. So that'll be interesting to hear about. But, yeah, I feel like I'm I'm not doing it right. Um, So my goal for the second half of the year is to actually read two classics that I've been like meaning to read for a long time that I have on my shelf. So hopefully that'll turn around in the second half of the year. As for reading six fantasy books, I am on track with that one. I've read three fantasy books so far. Mm. So I've read Legends and Lattes. I've read (laughs) American Gods. 
and I just recently read Piranesi. So those are three like right. solidly okay. fantasy books. I also yeah, tried reading cool. The Way of Kings, but I'm not counting that obviously because I DNF'd it. But I yes. um, okay. I'm still trying on that goal. So I feel okay. like I did okay. I did okay with those. Like yeah. I feel like I don't know. My fantasy shelf is constantly like in flux and changing. So I feel mm. like there's always something that I'm intrigued to read on there. So it's a little different from my classics situation where okay. some of those books have been on there for like 10 years. But yeah, so I'm feeling good about the fantasy one. Feeling good about that. Yeah. Okay. Next cool. up to have read 50% of all my hauled books. I'm a little behind on that right now because <gasps> I, you know, I've just bought a lot of books, but some of them have been <laughs> books that I've like, I've already read them that I, and then I then hauled them. Okay. So like, I'm not doing great, but it's still okay. So, so far I'm at 19 out of 48. <laughs> I've bought 48 books so far this year and 19 of them have been read. Um, so, so that's 39.58% uh, to yep. be very precise. Okay. <laughs> so if I don't buy any more books, all I have to do is read five of the ones that I've bought this year and I'll be oh, on track. Interesting. But that's if I don't buy any more. So obviously that's it's a little, a little bit, a little bit scary. Okay. Um, mm. So that one, we'll see. We'll see how that one goes. And then my final okay. goal that I'm working on is reading my seven most owned authors. And I don't think I've made any right. progress on this since we did our last quarterly update. I still yep. have to read Steinbeck and Atwood. I haven't read any Ooh. John Steinbeck or Margaret Atwood. And the Steinbeck okay. one has been a little bit of me just like getting in my own way as well because I, since mm. I've already read two classics, like I've done my two quarterly classics, I'm like, oh, I should wait until the next quarter to no. read John Steinbeck because he's but, a yeah. classic author. I should double up on them. Um, so I've just been like pushing him off because of that. But now we're into a new quarter. So I'm like, okay, I so have to time. read a John Steinbeck. <laughs> so I have Travels with Charlie, East of Eden, and The Grapes of Wrath. So I'm like, okay. do I dive in and read like an East of Eden big honker, yeah. you know, maybe... But I've been thinking I'll probably just read Travels with Charlie because it's the shortest. Yeah, but <laughs> it'll still count. We'll see. It'll still count. We'll see. And, and then... you might like it so much that you read another. Well, exactly. One, right? I have I have really good feelings about that one. Like I think I'm really gonna like it. And then as yeah. for Margaret Atwood, I have the Testaments, and then I have Oryx and Crake and the Year of the Flood. So okay, uh, it's like I don't know where to start with that. So yeah, as of right now, I've like knocked off five out of the seven, even though two of them were right. technically DNFs. But I'm still feeling good about that. Like as far as being halfway through the year, and I've done five out of seven. I think yeah. that's pretty good. So, I think that's great. Yeah, I kind of like got ahead of that one really early on. Like I read Murakami and Stephen King all in January. Like those are two of them. And I knocked yeah. them out right in January. And now I kind of wish that I was just reading more Murakami and Stephen King, honestly. Looking back, that's I'm like, interesting. I think I think I just need to read more of them in general. So yeah. that's huh. my new mental goal, but it's hmm. not an official one. But yeah, I feel like I'm doing pretty good for my goals anyway. I'm not like lagging behind on any of them except for reading my hauled books, which is manageable it's fine yeah how about you well i'm not feeling as confident as you that's for sure mm. hmm. yeah all right i had four goals well okay okay number one was to extend my bookshelves oh yeah i'm actually in this process right now yeah. as we speak in the camera you might be able to see a shelf behind me actually mm -hmm. that like i've literally i'm sta i'm at the stage of staining the wood Ooh. the bra many of the brackets are up on the wall like it is happening yeah and it, it will be finished it actually has to be finished before i go on a trip <laughs> oh. so it's gonna be <laughs> it finished to in the next two weeks okay um so that will be done and Partway through the year, which is cool. perfect. The next goal is to read 12 classics. I have read two. <laughs> I've read The Blue Castle and True Grit. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when I picked 12, <laughs> what I meant was to basically to read one every month. Yeah, you don't want to be like that trying to smoosh them all in at the end. Yeah, that wasn't officially a goal. Yeah. Like it wasn't like I have to read one every month. Yeah. But that, that was the motivation behind picking the, the number 12. Yeah. And so I'm definitely in trouble with this one <laughs> because if I read one every month starting now, I will get to eight books read. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to double up in some of these months, which yeah. is fine with me if I actually do it. But yeah. I'm clearly having troubles doing right, it. Right, right. But I also did want to add, like you said... I did read two classics, but they were not what I had in mind. Exactly. It's like we're kind of betraying ourselves a little bit in this classic. Yeah, goal. like 
what I had in mind was like Jane Eyre, which I've never read, or Mansfield Park, which is the only Austin I haven't read, or God forbid Orwell. Like you know what I mean? Like it's like some of these books that I've been really meaning to read for ages. So feeling mixed on that one. Yeah. Next goal is to read three biographies. I have read zero. But you like dipped into a few. <laughs> I know, I keep dipping, but they're the problem is they're so long. Uh, yeah. That I get distracted and I go read something else and then I pull back and I get distracted. And so I'm mm-hmm. like not finishing the end line of any of these. Um, and then the, the four, my fourth and final goal is to visit all the bookshops in Nova Scotia. And according to my current yeah. list, I'm at 10 out of 36, which is for me good for this point in the year because mm-hmm. I have plans for the rest of the summer to continue yeah. Yeah, there's this. there's lots of summer left. Um, yeah, there's lots of summer left, which is when I felt that the majority of that would happen. So the the i wrote down three reflections here okay because i do i do think these are a little interesting the first thing is that last year by july 10th because today is july 10th so last year by july 10th i had read 13 books Mm -hmm. today by july this year by july 10th i've read 16 books so i'm a little ahead of my reading from last year okay. which for me is a really good sign yeah because i do feel like i've been reading more than i was reading last year um and so it that is accurate yeah, we'll good. see how that continues and i feel like i'm like in a good swing of things right now okay so um second reflection is this is just funny because i finished rental person who does nothing today yeah. this morning Last year on July 10th, I finished The Anthropocene Reviewed on July 10th. Oh, wow. So, it's just funny. On July 10th, two books have been finished. Yep. Hmm. Oh, yeah. And my third thing that I'd written down was, I think the Nova Scotia bookshop list needs to be reworked, <laughs> which I talked about yeah. because, yeah, Something's I'm not sure not how right. accurate that <laughs> list is. I'm a little nervous about the accuracy of my yeah, list. Yeah, hopefully it's not, like, way more than you thought. God, imagine if it's, like, 53. <laughs> You're like, ah, it's not gonna happen. If it's 53, then I will just make my goal to just visit the 36 of them this year, yeah. and then I'll continue it next year. Cause yeah. I signed up for 36. That felt like a lot, but still possible. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, there you go. Those are our quarterly check-ins. Okay. I will. I would say that I'm feeling good not great yeah. i don't feel great about them but i don't feel like all hope is lost no definitely not and like you know what i mean i think we've said this on the podcast before but if not we were just talking about this yesterday i think if you read mm. all of the anne of green gables books that'll yes. be like you'll want to keep reading the next one because you love anne so yeah. much and so that's an easy way potentially to read eight like pretty close together Classics. if they're not back oh, yeah. to back to back at least pretty close together yeah Throughout and those the year. that would totally be count. amazing yeah um Amazing. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. We hope that your goals are going well. (laughs) Yes. And um, yeah, we're going to go record our Patreon mini podcast, Movie Tub, where we talk about the books or shows we've been watching lately. I'm going to be talking about Miss Audrey Hepburn, which is pretty exciting. Um, We'll talk to you guys next week. We sure will. (laughs) Bye. Goodbye. (laughs) 